The book of Philippians is brief. Four chapters. Take about 15 minutes to read it. I commend it to you as a good use of your time. It's one of the letters that Paul wrote um, from prison. I have long thought it's perhaps Paul's most pleasant letter, or perhaps it would be better to say that the Philippian church, he's very fond of them, at least at the moment, that he wrote the letter to them. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, verse 3, chapter 1, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It's right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. The Philippians needed some gentle corrections. They had also sent uh, money to support Paul's ministry, and he makes a lot of indirect references to that while praising them. And chapter 4 goes this way. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat Yodia and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord, which would have been awkward for them because it's probably 30 people in the room and one person had to read this. And I wonder if it was a confrontational person who looked at them when he was reading it or someone who was just reading it and hid behind the paper. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, that would be the reader of the paper, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonables be known to to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, I'm skipping to verse 10, that you at length have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. He's speaking now about the gift that they sent him, financial gift. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In this short book, Paul uses the word joy about 15 times, writing from prison again. And in what I just read, he defines it as something that doesn't come and go but flows out of faith in Jesus Christ. And the union with Christ that we receive by faith is with us at all times and forever. And that is the joy that he remarks on around 15 times in this letter. And he's saying, again in verse 17, after talking about the gift that they sent, he said, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit It increases to your credit, reminding us that when we are generous with our money, it blesses us. Not with more money, but as a a fragrant offering to the Lord. In verse 18, he says, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The context of Philippians is more pleasant than Galatians or Corinthians, um, and perhaps it's easier to understand the theology behind it. And one of the gifts of this book is a somewhat meandering definition of joy that we can do all things through him who strengthens me. Of course, the first hearers wouldn't have thought they could breathe underwater or fly or double their net worth, but that they could deal with all of life's adversities that face them every day, regardless of whether they have more or less 
abundance, hunger, or need because of Jesus and because faith in him delivers peace that surpasses all understanding and joy, which is spiritually abounding regardless of outward circumstances. Mm -hmm.